So, you want to play Phasmophobia in Minecraft? Well, this video is going to show you exactly how to do that, how to survive, how to use tools, and best of all, just how to play correctly. Because there, I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube about people trying to play Minecraft Phasmophobia, and they suck. They don't watch any tutorials, they just dive right in with the knowledge that it's similar to Phasmophobia, and that's all they try and put together so um i'm going to teach you how to install it and how to do everything correctly now this video is going to assume that you have never played phasmophobia or the minecraft version um and we're going to walk uh, we're gonna step right in to this tutorial so the first thing you want to do is you want to go to the first link in the description or you want to type in this link right here neomccreations.com and it will bring you to this page it'll bring you to this page and what you want to do is you want to click on maps phasmophobia just to make sure that you're in here and then once you're in here you can scroll down to right here skip, skip past all of this we're going to be talking about this in a minute you want to come down here and you want to click download you want to click green download and it'll bring you to the place that you can download it from you can download the first version you can download the second uh, point two version you can and then this is uh point this is number it's like yeah 3.0.4 you can read the change log if you want i'm not going to do that so what you want to do now is you want to right click on this file and you want to click download. It's going to scan it for viruses. Don't worry, this, can, this is completely safe. There are no viruses anywhere. I've tested this many times and it is a legit, uh, legit um, Minecraft Phasmophobia clone. So you just want to wait for this to download. And while this one is downloading, we're going to go back to this page and we're going to click on resource path. I'm just gonna close out of that and you have two versions you have the old one for the old uh, version and you have the new ones but all we see is phasmophobia by the way nice typo um, all you see is phasmophobia by neo mc you want to hover over it hover over the name and you can see there's a phasmophobia by neo mc resource pack version 3.1 streamer safe which is the one I'm going to download. But if you guys are not a YouTuber or you're not a streamer, then you should get this one because this one has more sound and audio in it. But same thing with the uh, the other one. You just want to right click on it and click download. This one says you can't scan for viruses, but again, this is completely safe and there are no viruses. So just click download anyway. Wait for it to finish. And while that is while that is um, doing that, we're going to go over to our downloads or wherever you downloaded it, and we're going to um, open up our worlds folder. So what you need to do is you, win you need to hold Windows and press R, and then this little uh, prompt right here will open up. You want to do, you want to type percent app data percent and then press enter and you will be taken to your uh, app data roaming folder and then what you want to do is you want to go into dot minecraft you want to find saves and then here are all the save and you want to go back to your download and you want to uh, find the world which is the first uh, which is this one phasmophobia by mine uh, in minecraft by new mc and you want to uh, right click it press cut go to your saves folder and press paste it will then move it to that folder and you can't just you can't play the world in the zip folder it won't show up what you need to do is you need to right click on it again and you need to uh, click extract here um, I'm using WinRAR so I need to play, uh, click extract here but if you don't have WinRAR, it'll say something like, 
uh, extract two, and then you'll just click that, and uh, it basically does the same thing. And then you wait for that to finish up, and you can delete the zip, because we don't need it anymore, and we have this one. Alright, so now we got the world in there. Now we want to get the resource pack in there. Now the resource pack is a little bit more tricky. Uh, so you want to go back to Minecraft, that Minecraft, and you want to find resource packs. And this one you can just drag in there, and then it'll move it by itself, and it will... Uh, it'll work in this zip form. However, there is one more thing you need to in, uh, download and install, and that is Optifine. So you want to go to optifine.net slash download, or the second link in the description, and you want you will bring you to this page. You want to click show all versions, you want to scroll down to 1.16.5, and you want to press mirror. That'll take you to this page and it'll skip any ads and then you want to click download. It will now download the uh, 1.16.5 jar. Now this is an ad, but there are no ads in between downloading it and uh, that. So you just want to wait for that to finish. Okay, it's now finished. So we can close out of our browser. And we want to go back to our downloads and we want to uh, before we run this, we need to move it to the desktop. Before we run this file, we need to go into my. We need to open the Minecraft launcher and make sure that we've played 1.16.5 specifically before. Because. Uh, if I could minimize this, please. Thank you. If we double click this and click install. It will say, cannot find Minecraft 1.16.5. You must download and start Minecraft 1.16.5 once in the official launcher. So, what that means is you basically have to play 1.16.5, and I'll show you how to do that too. So once you open up the launcher, you want to go to installations. You want to create a new installation. You want to click on this here, and you want to type 1.16.5. And you don't want the snapshot, you want the release 1.16.5. I'm just gonna change this number to 4, you don't have to do that, uh, it'll still work with 2, but I'm just gonna change it to 4. I'm also gonna change this, I'm just gonna name it to, and then you wanna click create. And once you do that, you wanna go back to the play tab, and you wanna find your install the installation that you just made, for, uh, for me it's at the bottom release 1.16.5, you want to click on it, and then you click play. And then you wait for it to download. Okay, so it is now downloaded, and once once it uh, launches, um, you actually want to close back out of it, but I have forgotten something. So, if you go into Optifine, excuse me for one second, Minecraft. Okay, so Minecraft is going to launch, and it's going to load up, which is fine, you want it to do that. And we're just going to wait for this to load. Okay, it's loaded up, and uh, I'm just going to close out of it because we don't need the point uh, 16.5 version. So, you have your Optifine file, you have your dot .jar, however, it doesn't look like this icon. Um, what you need to do is you need to install Java Oracle, so you want to click, yeah, you want to look for Java Oracle. And you want to click on the first link right here, https uh, oracle.com slash java. And then you want to find the most recent one, which is, actually you need, to click, you need to click download java first. And then you need to come down here and you need to find the most recent version, which is, one point, uh, which is uh, java 19. And then you come down here and you need to click on windows. And then you need to click on the install you need to click on this link right here and you want to wait for that to finish and once it finishes you uh, double click it in the downloads folder so you double click it in the downloads folder I've already done this so I don't need to but you will double click it in the downloads folder and you will go through the installation and uh, once that's done you need to restart your computer and then once you have restarted your computer 
uh, this file should now look like this. And uh, then what you can do is you can double click it and it'll open this up and you want to click install. You want to wait for it to do its thing. Optifine is successfully installed. And you want to click OK. And you can actually delete this now, you don't need this anymore. But I'm just going to put it in my Optifine folder. I already have it, so I'm just going to replace it. But um, now what you want to do is you want to go back to the Minecraft launcher. You want to open it up. And uh, you're just going to wait for it to load. Kind of taking some time right now. I don't know why. But you want to wait for it to load. There it is. Okay. And you want to come down here and you want to find Optifine. So this one's Optifine 1.16.5. Uh, however, if you use this one, uh, if you use this one, you will have to use that jar file and reinstall it every time. But what I recommend doing is going back to the installations tab, clicking new installation, typing in 1.16.5 again, and you want to do release 1.16.5 Optifine. And then that's the Optifine one, and uh, I'm just going to title this. some more RAM basically and then what you want to do is you want to click create and you can actually uh, click play in here too but I like to come back to here and find it in here and then click play all right and then you want to click play you are about to play a Minecraft Java edition installation that has been modified we can't guarantee the game will support the latest player safety features uh, what you want to do is you want to click I understand the risks don't warn me again about this installation and you want to click play and then you want to wait for this to load. Okay, it is downloaded. I'm gonna wait for Minecraft to open. Okay, so we're back. Minecraft has loaded and it is installed. Uh, Optifine. So now what you want to do is you want to go to your single player world. And now here, uh, here is the Phasmophobia world. And I'm just going to edit the name and call it Phasmophobia. Save it. Okay. But before we join in here, we want to go to Options. And we want to go to Video Settings. Change the Dynamic Lights to Fancy. This will project an illumination around you when you use torches. And you want to go into... Uh, not shaders. You want to go into Details. Turn off the clouds. And you want to, um, okay, the last everything in details, but you want to make sure that your render distance is at uh, 10 chunks, and uh, I'm just going to set this to fancy, not fabulous, but fancy, and then we're going to go to quality, and connected textures has to be off. If it's on, uh, things will look like glass, uh, and it won't look correctly won't look correct and it won't um, it won't look as atmospherical so you want to make sure the connected textures is off and you can go into performance and show FPS and all that stuff you can change this however you want to but the main things that you need to make sure are the same is that you have dynamic lights to fancy I'm just gonna set smooth lighting to maximum so it's not snapping and then and then you want to set uh, connected textures to off. And now you can go in and join this world. Wait for it to load. And boom, here we are. We're in the world. However, we, uh, as you can see, these don't look like how they should be looking. And I need to turn off auto jump because auto jump is annoying but what we need to do first is we need to go into our options resource packs and we need to find the phasmophobia uh the phasmophobia pack and move it in here this is just a pack that i'm making um you want to move this in here and you want to click done and that will load up that resource pack 
with all the sounds and texture files and now everything looks correct see the you've got all the tools over here you've got the uh, maps you've got the um we've got these the creators of the game uh the creators of the map and the resource packs and so you're in the game now now what so um you can kind of mess around there's the light switch that doesn't do anything there's this button and it tells you that uh, all sounds are played under the hostile slider so if you want to turn that down you go to your options music sounds and turn down hostile creatures um but what uh, but um once you do that and you have that set how you want it to do I'll click this button and it will load this up and it says players uh, on the right it says players and it's empty so what you want to do is you want to come over here and you want to click join game you want to right click it and you will get all these items so um, if you press and hold tab you will see your name and then your level next to it I'm level zero and I don't have any money uh, you can see your money by going to buy items and your money was, would be right there and you can click on the plus to buy items but I do not have uh, enough money to buy those and you can also come in here get uh, the getting started uh, thing and you can come in here and look through all of this but we're going to be talking about that once we load it so uh, there's also settings uh, you can turn on experimental items and ghosts. Uh, experimental ghosts adds, I think, eight, eight new ghosts to the game that aren't in the typical game. And oh, here it is. It says it right here. Uh, adds four bonus ghosts not found in the regular game. And then you want to. Uh, I thought it was eight, but it's four. Uh, and experimental items adds an assortment of additional items not found in the regular game. Uh, if you turn this setting on, it'll say true up there. If you turn this setting on, you will get another book. Add experimental items, and you can uh, add these items, and you can also take a look at these items. The experimental items, you have an activity tablet, which is just a mobile version of the activity screen in the truck. Same thing with the sanity tablet. The master key is really helpful. If you get hunted and you're stuck next to the door, uh, you can right-click on the door with, with by holding the uh, with holding the master key, and you will unlock it. Uh, however, it will use your master key, and you will have to buy another one, I think. Uh, uh, voodoo doll. Um, you can place voodoo dolls down on the ground by sneaking and right-clicking. Uh, same thing with spirit traps. Um, so the voodoo doll will during a hunt it'll the ghost will be attracted to the voodoo doll instead of a player. And once it touches it, the hunt will end. And the spirit trap will trap a ghost that is uh, coming towards your direction. So you can, like, sneak, place down a trap, lure the ghost into it, it'll get stuck, and then you can run and hide. And then bonk punch just makes you incredibly fast for, I think it's like five seconds. But, uh... We're not going to worry about this, so I'm going to turn all of these off. And we're going to go into Select Contract, and we're going to uh, re... Okay, I guess I should tell you about this. This is the uh, map selection screen. So you have Amateur, Intermediate, Professional, Extreme, and then Nightmare. Uh, nightmare is the hardest, being you have you start with zero sanity, and taking pills will drop your sanity by one every second. And so you really only have 50 seconds every sanity pill uh, every time that you're at 100. Only have 50 seconds to do stuff. Uh, extreme is, uh, I think you start at 100, but your sanity drain speed is like 0.5 per second. So you don't have a lot of time there either. And then you have uh, amateur, pro intermediate, and professional. Uh, amateur is what we're going to start with, but um, intermediate and professional is for uh, experienced players who have more items to survive. Um, 
the ghost can hunt faster because it uses, uh, it takes more of your sanity. And here is the refresh contract screen. So if you right click with this, it'll say uh, the contracts have been shuffled. And you can look through this again. And uh, it'll pick the map based on, uh, well, you can pick the map based on what professional, uh, what difficulty you want. So say we're going to go to Tanglewood Amateur. Then you would right click this. And it will say that you have picked the Tanglewood Amateur contract. And then what you want to do is you want to go over to the um, back to main menu thing right here, the wither rows, and you want to right click. I'll bring you back to this screen. And if you have items, you can go to the add items book and you can uh, up here, once you right click, you can come up here and you can click add all items. Uh, but I don't have any, so we're going to go over to this red wall, right click, and then... It'll turn green if there are multiple people in the lobby, but because we're the only person, it'll turn blue because uh, we are the only person and we have readied up. So now we're going to right-click this again, and it will take us right, to the map that we selected, which is Tanglewood Amateur. And there's also tips at the bottom. Uh, using a spirit box to call a Bloody Mary is a very, uh, very dangerous idea. Uh, we have turned off the experimental ghosts because this is your first mission. We're going to assume that this is your very first mission. So, we've arrived at Tanglewood. Uh, Tanglewood should be nice. Reports of violent supernatural encounters have been frequent. Stay vigilant and keep on your toes. Yeah, so he'll just say that. Uh, doesn't have anything to do with the game. Uh, you have everything to do with the game. Amateur, you have a setup timer of five minutes. So once you go, once you open the front door, which is that door, the setup timer will start. You start at 100 sanity, and uh, you can go through all the books. There's the guidebook. Um, for example, power uh, has a power breaker. If you turn on too many lights, it'll turn it off. Uh, passive actions. Aggressive actions, items, ghosts, objectives. We're going to be talking about all of that in this video. Uh, you can also look at the ghosts. Uh, we have the spirit, the wraith, the phantom, the poltergeist, the banshee, the djinn, the mare, the revenant, the shade, the demon, the yure, and the onu. Uh, and then if you click on this page, we have the experimental ghosts that we have not added. Also, I believe it is 8, but it said 4. 1, 2... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, there is eight. I was right. Um, and if you click on, uh, we're just gonna click on the spirit. It'll bring you to that page corresponding with the with the ghost. So the spirit, a common ghost, but do not take it lightly. It is still quite powerful and dangerous, and is very capable of killing. And it'll tell you the evidence down here at the bottom: spirit box, fingerprints, and ghost writing. And then if you uh, go forward one page, it'll say spirit continued. Uh, this has strengths. Uh, the weak, uh, the spirit doesn't have any strengths. Uh, the weakness, smudging, a uh, spirit will pacify it for twice as long as other ghosts. I will need to test this because I have not tested how long it smudge, uh, pacifies a ghost. And then if you click, uh, another page, it'll go to the, uh, rest of the ghost. And you also have the items, you have the thermometer, thermometer, you have the thermometer, you have the EMF reader, the spirit box, the camera, the UV lantern, ghost writing book, and the flashlight. Uh, the flashlight is in this chest, and you want to bring one of these. Um, you can also hover over items, uh, hover over equipment, and it'll tell you uh, details about the item. For example, it says a flashlight is a small... A small flashlight that can repel the darkness. Entering a home without one will result in blindness, which is true. If you enter the house, uh, you will be you will have uh, the blindness effect applied to you, and you will not be able to see. And then there are the uh, objectives. I always like looking at these first thing I come in here. Objectives. Discover what kind of ghost we are dealing with. Uh, we'll talk about this in a minute. Uh, number two, detect a room below 10 degrees uh, Celsius using a thermometer. Thermometer. I keep saying that. It's thermometer. Uh, and it's actually 5 degrees Celsius. Uh, I think they 
they either fixed it or they haven't fixed it yet. But it, it's uh, just make sure it's five degrees Celsius to complete this objective because I've gotten below uh, ten before, like nine point five or something, and it wouldn't count. And then have a ghost walk through salt and leave footprints. We do not have salt. That is part of the secondary items. And then the last one is the expert objective. Um, you can finish this one to get more money. Uh, finish your investigation before the ghost attempts to hunt. That is the plan because hiding on Tanglewood is kind of impossible. Um, we will also talk about hiding too. Okay, and now we have the evidence book. The evidence book is where you fill out the ghost's evidence. So, say you walk inside and you use the thermometer gun and you get freezing temperatures. You click the plus next to it to scribble it down. And then you can click it again to uncheck it, basically. So, uh, you can... So let's say we have freezing temps. That means it would be Wraith, Phantom, Banshee, Mare, Demon, or Uri. And uh, let's say we get Spirit Box next. Then it would be Wraith, Mare, or Demon. And let's say we get EMF 5 wouldn't be possible, so you must have gotten something wrong. So, EMF5 is not possible. How about Ghost Orbs? Ghost Orbs would give you Mare. Now, if you get a combination that, uh, if you get a combination that, uh, of two that leaves you with one ghost type, you have to find that ghost type inside the book. Uh, for example, Poltergeist. Poltergeist. Uh, if you do a uh, Spirit Box and Fingerprints, uh, it uh, we'll do Spirit, Wraith, or Poltergeist. But if you have uh, Fingerprints and Ghost Orbs, I believe, it must be a Poltergeist. However, uh, this will not work, and you will not select the Ghost type. So what you have to do is you have to go to the Ghosts book, you have to click Poltergeist, and you have to fill in the rest of the evidences. So we have Fingerprints and Ghost Orbs, then it would be Spirit Box. So we need to fill that in. And now we have uh, Poltergeist filled in, and that's how you get your money. But we're just going to uncheck those, and we're going to look over the main items. These are the six key items. Um, the experimental objective can sometimes be finish the, finish the round using only the six key items. That basically means you can't touch anything in the secondary items or the experimental items chest. Um, and if you remove it, then you will not complete the objective. So... What I recommend going in with is a camera and a thermometer. Um, to turn on the thermometer, you hover over it using your, uh, just like default Minecraft, and you use your scroll rail to scroll over to it, or you can use your numpad, uh, not numpad, your number keys at the top of the keyboard. You can, you get to your thermometer and you right click, and it will bring you, uh, you will show up this screen right here on the right and now you can go inside of the house and the breaker starts on on all versions on all difficulties apart from uh nightmare and extreme i believe okay and then you can use the thermometer to detect where the ghost is so let's see if it's in here it is not now uh the developers of this the developers of the clone kind of nerfed the thermometer into the ground. The refresh rate is very bad. Um, it's four seconds refresh rate. It doesn't seem like a long enough time. What you can do is you can substitute the thermometer for the EMF reader. The EMF reader uh, updates every second. And uh, if you're close to the ghost, it will show emf3 and the ghosts cannot throw items in this game uh in this clone so um having it show emf3 basically means you're standing on top of the ghost all right and we have appeared to have found the ghost it's in the master um closet so we can turn off the thermometer and we don't need it anymore now we can go over to our camera and to place the camera down you sneak and then you right click and it will place the camera down, and you can then go back to the truck. You can then go back to the truck and look at the camera through the truck screen. 
Our sanity has also dropped by 90%, or uh, by 10%, I mean. And, uh, whoops. So here's what you do to look at the camera. The use camera button, you right click on it, and you can see through the camera. And the only reason you would really want to look through this camera is to see ghost orbs and view your teammates, uh, see what evidence they get, and if it steps in salt or something like that. But it doesn't appear to be ghost orbs anywhere, but ghost orbs have also been nerfed a little bit. They take a while to show up, so you could be sitting here for a few minutes. Uh, usually, I try looking for ghost orbs last because it's very... Uh, very long, like, it takes a very long time to get. So then, what I usually do is I go in with a ghost writing book and a spirit box. So we're going to take the uh, ghost writing book and we're going to put it inside the room by, again, shift, uh, shift, sneaking and right clicking. So we're just going to right click, sneak right click, we're going to close the door. It's actually freezing. This is the freezing breath. Um, so we can turn this off. Uh, not turn this off. We can mark this down as freezing temperatures. And we've also completed this objective because it was 2 degrees Celsius in here. And uh, we're going to turn the light off so we can use spirit box. Now how you use spirit box is you, uh, you right click it and it'll turn on. And then you want to press T to open up your chat menu. And you want to click one of these options. So I'm going to say, um, can you talk to us? And then you want to press enter, right click again, and do the same thing. Uh, you can't right click when you're in this menu. So you have to uh, continually do this. Until you either get a spirit box response. Or... Um, end up not having a spear box. And there you go, it uh, it is actually spear box. So we can mark down spear box. So it's a wraith mare or demon. Um, fact about the demon, it cannot be, oh, did it just turn the light off? It cannot be a, um, it cannot be a, um, a demon because demons will always respond to the spear box no matter what, uh, if you're in the same room as it. Uh, and speaking of which, if you try to talk to it and you get no reply, that means you're close enough to the ghost to get a response. But if you are not in the same room, it'll show uh, nothing detected because you're not in the room with the ghost. So now that we have Spirit Box, I'm going to close both those doors. And the reason for that is what we're going to talk about next is surviving hunts. So what you want to do to survive a hunt um, is you want to close, you want to get between as many doors between you and the ghost as possible. Um, and um, the ghost has a certain amount of doors that it can break down during a hunt. So it can break down, I think the maximum doors it can break down is one. Uh, with any ghost apart from the wraith. The wraith can break down two doors, I believe. So getting getting as many as three doors between you and the ghost's starting position is very is very important for surviving hunts um, because hiding is kind of impossible. Um, and also we've lost uh, some sanity. And uh, you can also use spirit box to drive up the... Uh, activity if you need something to happen. For example, I used the spirit box to talk to the ghost. It then started uh, touching the light switch. Um, so now here's what we want to do. We want to go in with a UV lamp. And we know it can't be EMF5 because if we go in here and we pick EMF5, uh, it is not a possibility. Uh, ghost writing would be demon, so it can't be ghost writing because it didn't, uh, didn't always reply to the spirit box. Um, fingerprints would be Wraith, and Ghost Orbs would be Mare. So, we're gonna go in with the UV lamp. And see if we can find, um, some fingerprints. And if we do, um, then that's good. Uh, sometimes the ghost has to touch the door to be able to find fingerprints, though. Um, but it actually appears that it has touched this door, 
uh, without opening it. Uh, these little green, green, green splotches are the ectoplasm or fingerprints. So we have a wraith here. We're going to mark down fingerprints. And I'm going to take out ghost orbs because we want it to be a wraith. And uh, we're going to check this door for fingerprints too. Which is, okay, yeah, it does have fingerprints. So now that we have the ghost, we're going to walk out. And we're going to go back to the truck. And also creepy am uh, ambience, pretty cool. Um, so we're going to walk back to the truck. And that's basically it. We have discovered the ghost. And if you have the items to do these objectives, then you should do that. Um, but once you have the ghost uh, type, and uh, put it in your book. Make sure that it's three evidences and not two. Um, you can right-click on this. It'll tell you to leave the location and head back home. Uh, head back to home base. Press the button again quickly. So you right-click it twice. It's basically just to make sure that if you accidentally right-click it, you don't leave. Because you can't I'll stop you, leaving once you one click of you the button. Also, uh, he kind of gets, uh, well, not kind of gets mad, but, like, it's a chance for him to get mad. So the ghost was a wraith. Uh, we got $70 because we were on amateur. We got $15 for getting the ghost. $15 for detecting the room below 5 degrees using a thermometer, and we can actually see that up here. Um, we did not complete the third objective because we do not have salt. And we completed the fourth objective which gives us $40, um, and uh, the difficulty will multiply the amount of money you get. Um, so 15 plus 15 is 30, plus 40 is 80, I think. Hold on, 4, 5, 6, 7. No, it is 7. I thought it was uh, 80 for some reason. But anyway, it's 70. 70, and then it multiplies that amount by... The amount that you got so because we're on amateur it only multiplies it by one and so we earned 70 dollars and 70 experience points and uh every 100 levels uh every 100 experience points i believe you level up once so because we didn't level up uh because we didn't hit um uh because we didn't hit uh 100 experience we only we didn't level up at all so, uh, now we're gonna go back to, um, where do we want to go next? We're gonna go to, let's go to Edgefield. That's Ridgeview, Grafton, Edgefield, there it is. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about buying items. So, you can go to buy items book, and you have, well, I have $70. <laughs> I have uh, seventy dollars, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna buy a salt shaker for fifteen dollars to complete that objective. A uh, motion sensor, which I can't buy, and we're gonna. I'm gonna also buy a smudge stick because that's an objective as well. And then I'm gonna eat. I'm not eat. I'm gonna buy a sanity pill. And uh, you can view your items in the my items book. You have the key items, and then you have the other items you have, I have bought a salt shaker, a smudge stick, and a sanity pill. And you also have the experimental items, which we have not turned on yet. So we're going to go to uh, Edgefield Amateur, and we're going to add all the items by pressing this orange button up here. Add all items. And we'll add all the items to list. If you want to, you can add uh, only a few items. You can also add one if you want to. But it's kind of painful to do that, because once you add an item, you have to right-click the book again to do that. Um, but we're just going to radio up and start again. Oh yeah, they also recommend you only play with 50% brightness. So it's more, um, like, uh, it's more immersive, because you have 15, um, not 15, you have 50% brightness. As you can see, it's a lot more dark, but if we go in and we change it to bright, everything's quite uh, more brighter. And now we're at Edgefield Street House. Intro cutscene thing. Welcome to the quiet 
neighborhood of Edgefield. Don't get comfortable. There are reports of paranormal activity inside. Check your mission objectives and get to work. Yes, he says check your mission objectives. So, uh, instead of going in with a thermometer this time, because checking big maps with a thermometer takes a very long time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with an EMF reader instead. And the EMF reader will always show three when you're close to the ghost. And uh, two if it interacted with something. Four if it either did a ghost event or is aggravated. And five, uh, EMF five is a it's an exclusive thing. Okay, it's not in this room. Not in this room. Okay, and that was the ghost next to my EMF reader. So, it either left, it's either in this kitchen, or most likely, it's in this back room right here. Which it doesn't actually appear to be. This is why the thermometer is so important sometimes, is because if you can't find the ghost right away, then you use a thermometer. I think the ghost is actually in the kitchen, because I haven't gotten EMF anywhere else. It kind of sucks to get EMF, though, because the range is only one and a half blocks. However, the ghost could also be in here. Um, the ghost can travel through doors, and it has a chance to open doors. But, uh, the chance to open doors is like 25%, I think. I have no idea. I've had experience with the ghost being in the basement and traveling upstairs. However, it typically doesn't travel through multiple rooms. It does not appear to be in the basement. And this is the this is the kind of really bad thing about using the EMF reader because you can't get an accurate reading. So I'm gonna assume I'm going to assume that it's in the kitchen. I'm gonna place uh, my camera here, and then I'm gonna go back outside and grab the thermometer to make sure that it's in the kitchen. It could have also traveled from upstairs, which would kind of suck, because um, upstairs is massive. I'm uh, just going to take the thermometer and the ghostwriting book. Now, the thermometer, the thermometer kind of sucks to use in the dark because the, s the screen doesn't light up. So using it in the dark is practically impossible. Okay, it's not in this room. It's not in this room. Update, please. Okay, it's not in this room either. So it's not in the kitchen. Is it in here? It is not in here. Is it in the kitchen? It is in the kitchen, and it's actually freezing, too, which is neat. Okay, so we have a freezing ghost. Uh, I know it's freezing, not only because of that, but because the, um, thermometer, the thermometer said that it's, uh, freezing temperatures. So, you want to play, oh, it's also ghost riding, very interesting, okay. We have ghost riding, so it's demon or it's a ure. So, ure is ghost orbs, and demon would be spirit box. So, we're gonna go grab spirit box, and check for that. And if it doesn't immediately respawn, that means it's automatically a Yure. So we're going to grab Spirit Box. I'm just going to check the camera for Ghost Orbs real quick. Because we're here, so might as well do that. Excuse me. And you can also kind of cheat a little bit by uh, turning the overlay off by pressing F1. I don't see any ghost orbs 
So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use the EMF to find the ghost. And we're going to um, use the spirit box on top of it. Spirit box also only has... Oh, you're right here. That's annoying. The ghost is all the way over here in the living room. The ghost can also travel upstairs, which is also very annoying. What the heck? I can't walk. That was weird. My W key was being broken. Okay, it's back here. Right? Oh, come on. Stop leaving. This is the most difficult part about this whole game, is trying to get spear box. Because, uh, it's like nearly impossible to get spear box. Uh, if the ghost is in an open room like this, because we cannot see if it's here. Okay, so it's a demon. Because it is spear box, and demons... Uh, I'll show you that demons can always respond to your spear box. As long as it's in the room. See, it has actually left the room this time. And my W key is busted again. What is happening to my W key? I have no idea. But anyway, it's a demon, so we can now leave. Now, we're going to go to the ghost's book, and we're going to find demon. Demons are one of the worst ghost types you can encounter. It has been known to attack frequently and without reason. Spirit box, ghost writing, and phrasing tips. Uh... The ghost is much... This demon. The demon is much more likely to hunt than other ghosts. It will always reply to a spirit box if it's in the same u uh, same room as the user. So, uh, we now know what the ghost is. Now let's take a look at our objectives. Uh, detect it using a motion sensor. I don't have one. View the ghost in its physical form. I could do that. I have enough sanity... And successfully record an EMF reading of 4 or higher than a hunt. Uh, however, because this is a tutorial, I'm going to leave with my life because I do not want to die and lose my eye. Welcome back to home base. I hope you hunt as well. You can see, uh, as you can see, we only got $15 because we didn't do any of the other objectives. And that's basically how to, that's basically how to install the, uh, the game, the... Phasmophobia in Minecraft. And, of course, you can go to other maps, too. Um, you can go to uh, other maps as well by clicking uh, select contract. You can go to... Uh, however, uh, you want to pick your difficulty first. So, for example, for professional, Grimwood is this big, massive map right here uh, that really sucks to play on. I also forgot something. You have to op yourself. Um, it, as you can see, it says due to an MC bug, you must op all players or the books won't load. This is a server thing. Ex this is a server exclusive thing. Um, as you can see, I can change game modes. Uh, make sure you're in adventure mode so you don't break anything. Um, but if you're playing with friends, which we'll talk about how to do next... You will, um, you will need to, uh, slash op everybody, because the, uh, books won't load in multiplayer. So, we're still level zero, because we haven't leveled up enough, but we're gonna save and quit, and, uh, as you can see, it says the power of Christ compels you. That is simply the resource pack. So, um, we're now going to talk about how to play with friends. And we're going to use Eternos to do this. So what you want to do is you want to go to Eternos.org right here. And then you want to click on Play. You want to make an account. So I'm going to click Sign Up. And uh, I'm you're going to make an account. I'm just going to call this Phasmo Toot. And then you want to check both of these. And you want to click next. And then you want to set a password. I'm just going to call this uh, the password. Uh, Phasmo Toot. And then we're going to do the same thing. Phasmo Toot. And then 
Your email is optional. We're not going to use my email. But if you if you put in your email, then um, uh, it, it can link to your Google account, which uh, we'll talk about in a minute. But uh, no, I'm not going to save this. So once you're in here, you're going to create a server. Once you have an account, you can create a server. And uh, you want to select Job Audition. You can pick the icon if you want by clicking on this. It'll bring this up. We're just going to do something stupid like a snowball because, yeah. And then you can change the IP. I'm not going to change it. And then this is just a tutorial, so you can change the message of the day. Tutorial for YouTube. And we're going to save it. And we're going to click Create. It will now create the server. And it says I'm using an ad blocker. Just continue with ad blocker anyway. I can't really turn off my ad blocker. I mean, I can, but I don't really want to do that. Actually, never mind. Ads are playing anyway. Um, Pause on this site. Okay. So, yeah, turn your ad blocker off. And it'll also show this triangle next to backups. Uh, it says, please connect your Google account to save backups in Google Drive. Uh, well, I'm not going to do that because this is simply a tutorial. Now, here's what you want to do. It'll bring you to this page, and this is your IP that you will give to your friends to play uh, with, the, uh, with the game. However, you want to come down here to version, and you want to, you want to click on this shuffle icon, and you want to find 1.16.5, Click on it, click reinstall, click yes, reinstall, and then 1.16.5 is installed. So now what you want to go, you want to do is you want to go to server, and you want to, uh, not server, you want to go to worlds, and you want to upload, you want to click on upload, and you want to click zip archive. And then what you want to do is you want to find the Phasmo uh, thing that we downloaded. For me, I put it into into my desktop, into my mods, which is right here. Um, maps, Phasmophobia. Okay, so now that we've found where it's stored, um, this is just one. Uh, I called this one modded because I was looking through the code of that one. But you want to find it, you want to click open. It will then upload it. This might take some time, so I'll be back when it's uploaded. Alright, and it is now done. So we have the check mark, that means the world's done. And you want to make sure that force upgrade is off. Uh, because if force upgrade is on, it'll basically uh, upgrade it to the latest version, no matter what. And also, uh, you can change on optimize. Uh, Eternal servers have a storage limit of 4 gigabytes. A large partition, uh, portion of this storage can often be occupied by world files. Minecraft generates thousands of chunks around players and saves them, even if no player has entered them. To make sure your server stays within the storage limit and improve load times, the optimize button for your world is provided. If enabled, Eternals will automatically detect and remove unused chunks from your world. Uh, so we're just going to leave this on. Uh, you can, you can actually turn this off for Faz. Uh, you can turn this off for Phasmo, uh, because, um, when you load into it, because it's a custom world, uh, and the, the world's basically made inside of the void, no chunks have any blocks in them, so it won't have any data, but we're just going to leave Optimize on. And then, before you start your server and you get all excited, what you need to do, you have to make sure you do this. You have to go to Players. You have to go to Ops. And you have to op yourself. So, for example, my name is iHunts. My Minecraft username is iHunts. You want to put in your Minecraft username. I'm going to click Add. And there you go. I am now a uh, server operator. Um, and if you want to add people, um, if you want to have people access your server uh, through their accounts, you go to access, you put in their Eternos username, and I'm just going to do iHunts, don't know if that'll work. Yeah, it didn't work. Uh, wait, what if I do Phasmo? 
Yeah, it's username not found because we are that username. So uh, you can put them in there. You can customize that. But once you once everything like all that stuff is set up, you want to click start, and then you have to click yes, accept the uh, user and license agreement. Uh, the end user license agreement. Sorry. And then you want to uh, uh, please allow us to send notifications so we can notify you when your server is online. You can click OK, but um, I can click Cancel. I'm also going to kind of block the sounds because it, well, I guess I can't do that on Edge. But anyway, um, once it's online, it'll make that dinging noise. Um. So what you want to do is you then you then want to uh, click on this connect, and uh, you want to get the IP, and you want to go to you're back to Minecraft. You want to click multiplayer. You want to click proceed, and you want to click add server, add the IP, and then you have to well you don't have to but you can, uh, you can add the port on the end which is this set of numbers. So you do a colon, and then you put in the port, and I'm going to call this Phasmo, Phasmophobia, and uh, it will then load up, and um, you can refresh it on all that stuff. You can click OK. Uh, if you go back to options, you will see that our world didn't, uh, that our PNG didn't save. I don't know why it doesn't save when you create it, but you can do this, and then it will save. Uh, the only the only dumb thing about it, well, not dumb, but Eternos kind of has to do this. Uh, the only um, unfortunate thing about it, un, uh, about Eternos, excuse me, is that they have a time limit for people to enter the server. So, um, they have a time limit of six minutes to enter the server when it's first created. The reason for this is because um, uh, it's because uh, they have a bunch of people using their server, like using their host, like using their uh, their hosting like system. But this is basically how you play with friends. And now that you're in here, uh, it says that you're opt. So what you need to make sure you do is when everybody gets in. When everybody gets in, you need to do slash op, and then the person's name. So, I'm just gonna do this, but it'll say it'll tell me that I'm already an operator, and that's fine. Uh, and then, yeah, that's basically how you play Minecraft and Phasmophobia. So, I thank you guys for watching this video. It is about an hour long. I will put timestamps in the description. Um... Hopefully, anyway, so that you can uh, skip to whatever part that you need. Oh, and one more thing. When everybody disconnects, the server will shut off in two minutes instead of in uh, six minutes. Because, uh, so when you turn the server on, I'm just going to click cancel on that. And turn the server on it, you have six minutes to get somebody to join in, and then they have to wait for everybody else to join in. When everybody leaves and the server's empty, it has a two-minute timer, and then if nobody joins back in within that two minutes, it closes down to save uh, a Turnos uh, server's resources, so they're not uh, using so much of it, just running your server in the background with nobody in it. Um, so as you can see, if I start it up again, wait for this to load... It will see we have five minutes and fourteen seconds, and uh, you can stop this countdown. I think by paying for it. Uh, it says that the initial timer is three minutes, but it's only two minutes. I think, but we're just gonna turn that off. But yeah, anyways, I thank you guys for watching this video. If you did enjoy, please like and subscribe. There will be timestamps and links in the description so you can, um get to the websites and we'll see you guys in the next video thank you for watching